Hi, this is Julie from designsbyjuju.com and in this video I am going to show you how to customize our new break announcement templates using Embrilliance Essentials software. It is necessary to own an embroidery editing software in order to use these templates. We do highly recommend Embrilliance Essentials because you can use any of um, our or any other designer's BX fonts to just simply type out your text and customize them quickly and easily. And Brilliance has a great interface, wonderful customer support, and is really a user-friendly program, and it can also be used on a Mac. I will include a link to and Brilliance um, at the bottom of this video for those who are interested in checking it out. Today I'm going to be using our airplane birth announcement template, and um, this, what Charles Bellerschmidt, is my grandson, and he was born January 25th, 2018, and here's his information, which I got, I got the weight wrong, but we will fix that. Um, this is just an example. You don't have to own Embrilliance Essentials in order to use these templates. You, any of your embroidery editing software will work. The important thing is that you understand how to use your software, how to manipulate text, how to align your text, um, and just the general functioning of it. So you, the thing with another software program is you will have each of these letters, if you're using a purchased font, is an individual stitch file, so you'd have to import one at a time, C, H, A, R, L, etc., and be able to line them up and um, place them. It's just a matter of uh, grouping and then just kind of puttering around. But um, it's not hard, it's just definitely more time consuming than if you were doing it in Embrilliance. So I wanted to let you know that. And then one other thing that's important to note is that you cannot use these templates with the free version of Embrilliance Express. The free version does not allow you to merge text with existing designs and save it. You can only type something out. So that is an important uh, thing to note before um, we continue with this video. So I'm going to bring in the empty template for um, the little airplane and I'm going to show you how easy it is to customize this. So let's get started. I'm going to open my designs. I've included metric for um, those outside the US. I am going to use the universal and I'm going to choose an 8x8 size because I want to stitch it out and frame it. So I'm going to open my design and you will first thing you will see is that there is a basting box around all of my templates. The first step. You will not be stitching this out. This is more of a guideline for you so that as you customize this and put lettering above this green line or at the bottom of another design, um, whatever the basting box is, is your hoop guideline. So as long as you stay in that box, then at the end you can delete the basting box and you'll know that everything will fit within your correct size for your embroidery hoop. So when you bring in a design, if you just click on it, everything is grouped. So the first thing we want to do is go to Edit, Ungroup. Okay, this will allow you to delete just the box at the end. And then I'm going to drag a box around the rest of the template and I'm going to do again Edit and I'm going to group that so that things don't move around while we're customizing this. Okay, so now I'm going to select that template, and for this purpose, every, the text and the name is two rows, and it goes above the green lines. You'll have pictures from the website and your stitch charts to be able to give you an example. I am going to drag this down towards the bottom, and you never want to go outside that guideline. This is just to make it easier for you. Now I'm going to show you this picture again. I used a first and middle name and then his last name. You can do whatever you want. If you want to, if you have a longer first name um, and last name, you can just do like first and middle name, or you can put the last name on the top and first name under here. It's really a matter of preference. But for this video, I'm going to do his first and middle name on top and then his last name in a different font. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is add his first and middle name. So you're going to go to the top of your screen and just click that letter A and you will see your text here show up. I am gonna type out his name, Charles Valor, and I know that I wanna use what I have in here. I have the Ainsley font the, from Digistitches, which is three quarters of an inch. So I just click that and voila. 
Um, it's a little longer than I want. I am going to go to the top here. Um, just to note, when you're using in Brilliance, each letter has a little like green box and you can adjust the letters if you choose, but I think this looks good already, but I did want to show you that. Okay. So now um, I'm going to shrink this down a little bit so it's more in alignment. I'm going to bring it all the way to the top. And I just want it to be in alignment with the bars that I have. And that's okay to um, resize it a little bit. Try to choose um, fonts, the sizing that you have the space for, um, and then go from there if you need to adjust it. Try to, um, because they are digitized in, um, for certain sizes for maximum stitch quality. So when you do uh, resize something, you only want to do it as minimal as possible. Okay, so I have his name, and that's a dark blue. Um, you can stitch in any colors that you want. So if you, um, the next one we're going to do is change the color for the last name. I'm going to click the letter A again to do his last name. And now I'm going to do it all caps, S-C-H-M-I-D-T, over here on the right. Click Set, and I know that I wanted to use the payphone font in, um, I have it down here in a one inch size. That's good. And I'm going to bring it up and I want to align this. And for this I think I'm going to kind of smush it actually. And then elongate it a little bit to make it kind of taller. And there we go. Now I know that I want to, to make this red. So over here where the text is you'll see letters on the right. And if you watch my cursor there's color. Click on the box and I'm going to change it to a red. It doesn't so much matter what your colors are on the screen, but you want your color change for your machine to stop. And I think it was a Christmas red, and I click OK, and there we go. So now I have his name, Charles Valor Schmidt. Great. So now we want to customize with the date, the time, pounds, ounces, and inches. And I did include metric versions with uh, kilograms and centimeters for you, for those who don't live in the States. Um, for um, the date, uh, for this, all this text here, I'm going to use a font that's already installed. So let's see, I'm going to click the, um, the letter, and I know that Charlie was born in January. And I know that I want to use a pre-installed font that came, oops, sorry, that came with Essentials, and it's called Block. And I'm going to bring that up here, and I want to enlarge that somewhat. There we go. There, I think that looks good. That was very, see how simple it is to just drag it? Um, and then he was born, we're going to click our letter A again so that each of these are separate. He was born on January 25th, set. I'm going to drag that into my little cloud and I'm going to enlarge that and stick it in the cloud. So now we have January 25th. You know what, now if you make a mistake like I just did, I didn't want to do that. So, let's take that, I'm going to click delete. I want it to make here January 25th, all one word. I'm going to set, and now I want to move my numbers from, I'm going to move them closer to the lettering. So see how easy it is to just kind of go back and edit? I'm glad I kind of made that mistake for the purpose of this video. Um, now I'm going to make it smaller so that it fits. There we go. There we go, January 25th. Now I want to put the year in the cloud. And I'm going to click the letter A, and it was, he was born in 2018, so I guess we're a little late, right? Um, but you can just drag it. I'm going to make the make it maybe more elongated. You can do whatever you choose to design it how you want it to look. January 25th, 2018. Great. And if you're working from top to bottom, and these can be they can be dragged and moved around, but you see that my I, um, it'll stitch his name, so after the whole design, it'll stitch his name, with his last name, the date, the year, and now we're going to go down and do the time. So Charlie was born at 12.26 a.m., so I chose the 
um, and template. Well, 26. And I'm going to click set. And I'm going to bring it down here. And then once I bring it down, I'm going to just kind of drag it to make it fit. Now, just in case you're wondering how much space you have, I'm going to show you how to just measure that. Keep your eye, one, once I click this ruler at the top of the screen, okay, keep your eye down here. I click the ruler, left click, say so I want to see how much space I have in this cloud. I'm going to click and I'm going to drag down and you can see on the uh, lo lower left hand side of the screen, there's 13 sixteenths of an inch. If you're just looking for an idea, if you're using a different font and you want to know what size to use, let's see how much space we have in here. I'm going to left click and I'm going to drag and I say I have 7 eighths of an inch so that's great. You can use a 3 quarter inch size for the numbers here. Um, if you have um, you know, if you have a double digit pound baby, you might need to shrink them down a little bit. But uh, let's use, I'm going to use, let's do a big baby. My son Jacob was 11 pounds 12 ounces. Yes, I was in pain. So, but let's put that in here. Um, so I'm going to go in here and I'm going to type 11. Let's bring it down. So, Let's make it like really bold just because and brag at how big he was. Okay. Okay. And let's do another um, one. 12. Set. And I just dragged that by accident. No biggie. Up here, you see the undo button. There we go. Now I can just take the 12 and drag it down and I'm going to resize that. I'm going to show you something in case you run into this in just a moment. Okay. And he was 21 and a half inches long. So I am going to type again here and I'm going to put 21.5. I'm going to set that. He did not fit into his newborn clothes going home from the hospital. And he was two weeks early, by the way. Um, okay, we're not even talking about Charles Bella right now. We're talking about my son. <laughs> I'm going to drag this up a little bit and just tweak it. There we go. So now we've customized an entire template. I'm going to use the same color. A couple things I'm going to show you. Say you want to change the color. Um, of a bunch of items. I'm going to uh, hold my control key, my shift key. I want to change all these at once. So I selected the top one and then down um, the last step and I've selected all of the purple. I'm just going to uh, click on the color and say I want to make that an orange. And I've got true orange. Okay. And um, I want to show you how to do alignment um, with, so I just put in, I just um, made these, so then you see the 11 and the 12 are not aligned. If you want to make sure that those are aligned, hold your control key and select them both, and then you can go um, up at the top here on the bottom row of these little icons, you'll see kind of like three blue lines, and it says align and distribute. Click on that. And I want to align them along the bottom baseline. So if you just click bottom and apply, then um, you see how it moved the 12 down so that it's nice and perfectly aligned. So you can play around with those alignment tools also. Another thing you can do is if you are in um, the different objects of your design, see how 12, 26, and AM. Say you wanted those aligned. If you select just the AM and hold your control key, you could select the 1226, go back up, align and distribute, click the bottom and apply. Say you wanted them to be aligned centers, um, center horizontal here, um, apply. And that would make it so these are actually perfectly centered horizontally. I like it aligned on the bottom, so I'm going to do that. And I'm going to close that out. 
So now we have the entire um, template has been created and I am going to delete the basting box. If you like to stitch a basting stitch before any of your designs, you certainly can keep this and then remove it after. Um, I don't use the basting stitch. I just included it here for you as a guideline. The great thing is that um, you know, because everything's within that box, you know when you delete this and then save your file that it is going to be um, perfectly fitted for your 8x8 hoop. So just select that box, or you can click, any, anytime you want to click off something, just click on the screen, or you can go into the um, objects box and select it that way, and just hit the delete button. And here is your template all ready to go. Now we want to save it. I'm going to file, and I'm going to save a stitch file. And I'm going to just name it Charlie. And I want to save mine as a PES file. And save. And then you are ready to go to your machine. I will include a link to this video in the downloadable um, files for these. There is a general information sheet. I'll include a link there. I'm going to include um, a link on my website. I'll put it as many places as I can and I really hope that this was helpful to you. There's nothing to be intimidated by. It's fun. Um, get to know your software because there's so many things that you can do with it. I hope that you enjoy these and I really look forward to seeing all of the wonderful projects that you create. Thanks for watching.